Hey everyone, welcome back. As a reminder, Sisters of Parvos is dropping on July 6th, tomorrow at 2pm EST, so make sure you mark that time. In the previous video, we went over all 8 new Corpus Lich Tenet weapons and the 2 bonus Void Storm weapons, and how they will fare in the current meta. Today we will continue where I last left off. There are 7 weapons to go over today. The 4 briefcase melees offered on a rotating basis by Ergo Glass for Chosen Liches, and the 3 Kuva Lich weapons being added to the original roster. This one will be quicker than the previous video I presume, so let's dive right in. We're going to go over Ergo Glass selection of the 4 weekly choices first. From what we know, you will be able to reclaim one of these melees per week from the Void Storm via use of Corrupted Hollow Keys. So it will take you at least a month to get them all. Which one should you grab first? Well, they are melee so technically all of them are good, but honestly it does seem like the weapons are not made equal. We got a Sword and Board, a Heavy Blade, a Two-Handed Nikana, and a Scythe. Nevertheless, new weapons means more MR, so you're bound to pick them all up eventually. One thing to keep in mind is I have no idea if these melee weapons can have elemental bonuses due to lacking progenitor frames. We aren't sure if a lich will be associated with picking it up, or if you get a randomized element, or actually get to pick, or just none at all. Let's start with my favorite melee archetype, the Sword and Boards. Tenet Agendas, the Parvis symbol of authority. This is an impact-focused melee I'm assuming according to the description. We can't see the actual elemental distribution due to the dev stream face cams overlapping the stat window. What we can see though is that there are only two innate elements on the weapon, totaling to 260. Based on the weapon design, I could guess this weapon is impact and puncture, or impact and electric, or just maybe impact and cold. We already have Silva and Aegis covering the heat elements, so it's only natural for another elemental sword and board to come out. That said, this is just what I think, so don't take my word for it. Regardless of the innate IPS, the main sword and board stance, Final Harbinger, has forced Slash on the first and third attack of its neutral E. This makes it superb at mowing down single tankier targets, and in Steel Paths where hordes of enemies pile on you anyways, meaning you don't have to chase them down. Therefore, the fact this weapon will probably lack innate Slash is irrelevant. If it has an innate element, Cold will let you build for Viral with a single mod. Electric will allow you build for Corrosive with a single mod. Both would be very strong options, especially because a Primer can cover the missing desired element. An extra element also means one more stack for your gun dish and overload if you're constantly swapping between guns and melee. Because the stance has 4 slash, this means crits are more important on sword and boards. Attack speed is also super important. This weapon has middle to pack attack speed, not too fast or slow, which is easily fixed. It has very similar crit and melee stats to Silva and Aegis Prime, which is top of its class to compensate for the very slow swing and high damage. But Agendas has both higher swing speed and comparable damage. Compared to Sigma, traditionally the best sword in board, it has tiny bit worse crit stats but much better status and base damage. The slight attack speed advantage of Sigma means Agendas is likely to share the spot with Sigma as the best sword in board instead of being outright better. If you can inherit elements on these melee, Agendas will surpass them all easily. The weapon also launches energy discs on heavy attacks, but this is a bit weird because generally you don't use those on sword and boards, and they also have a weak multiplier and no force slash compared to the normal attacks. Because we don't know what the innate damage types are, this video will not include builds for the melee weapons. I have mixed opinions on this one, but am expecting something rather impressive. Next up is Tenet Exec. This is a heavy blade, I guess you could call it an executor's blade, and might possibly finally be a challenger to Grand Prime. The reason I'm still skeptical we will still get elemental bonuses on these Tenet melee is because even with a 60% bonus, the weapon still has slightly less base damage than Grand Prime. So if we do get elements, hooray. If we don't, uh, that's pretty depressing for this weapon. It also has 6% more critical chance, but 0.2x less critical damage at 2.4. It also has 10% less status, but that's still a very respectable 22, which easily surpasses 100% with Weeping Wounds. Labeled as a Bleeding Edge Granum tech, the play on words suggests it could have Slash, but I'm honestly not sure. If it doesn't have Slash, it can't compete with Grand Prime whatsoever, as the stance lacks Slash. There are only two innate damage types, so maybe it's Slash and another? I honestly have no idea for this one. It will come down to the unique perk of this weapon. Slams produce three shockwaves. Heavy slams produce a ton of expansive shockwaves. If it's something akin to Archetitron, then this could be pretty crazy. If it's more like Vitrica, then it can still find a use. There is a lot of potential here, so I really can't say what will happen. What I can say though is this weapon is a crit monster. 
38% critical chance means it still passes 200% with just Blood Rush even after the melee nerfs at 12x combo. This is few and far between these days, and honestly, if you have 3 gladiator mods present on the stat sticks or frames, you'll actually pass 300% and only hit reds at max combo. Hooray for the return of reds, I guess? I'm honestly very excited for this one and really hoping the shockwaves aren't just a gimmick. It has solid crit and status and possibly spare elements. Temple Royale and Cleaving Whirlwind have slams built into their stance combos, so maybe it will shine the best there. It could be insane or meh, only time will tell, but I'm looking forward to this. Tenet Livia, the two-handed Nikana. Unfortunately, we are also getting a Tenet Scythe with this update, and classically, Scythe's just Eclipse two-handed Nikana. Wise Razor is still the only stance and has been gutted. The fight flow with the combos on it are horrible now. The heavy attack is the only way to reliably get slash procs, but Pennant exists. How do you compete with the two-handed Nikana that is super crit focused, gains attack speed on heavy kills, and has four slash procs on heavy? Livia is pretty, but I don't think it will manage to make its mark. Its passive is better blocking angles, but when was the last time that was ever a viable strat? DE removed our only meme for blocking DPS that was in Amalgam Javlock Magazine Warp with Melee 3.0. If you want a nice two-handed Tenet Melee, look no further than the next choice. It is not this one. Tenet Grigori. This is the one I'm by far the most excited for. This is the only tenant melee that comes with the Granum Attaché system, which pauses the combo timer when holstered. With the instant holster between guns and melees, this is mostly just a nice gesture, but appreciated nonetheless, and it actually makes it really useful for low KPS modes like Disruption, where you can just holster the melee until the Demolist spawns. Sites also have forced slash on heavy attacks. But unlike two-handed Nikanas, they have actually decent stances, making them instantly better. Additionally, the Grigori will fling out a spinning ricocheting energy disc on a heavy slide attack. I'm wondering if this is going to be like a volatile rebound Glaive setup. Glaive meets Scythe, anyone? There's a lot of potential here, and it still works because you built for heavy attacks anyways on sites. Even if you don't use the heavy slide, the ordinary heavy attack will be more than enough. Definitely the topic out of all the new tenant melees. Spend your first hollow key on this one if you're looking for the melee that makes the most impact in this update. Agendas I would say is going to be the most fun if that's what you're looking for. Livia is just a collector item. Exec also seems really cool and potentially a game changing passive, but it will be entirely reliant on that to be relevant as Grand Prime is just too good. Vitrica also has its own gimmick and is actually pretty good as well. Both of those weapons have a solid amount of slash buys as well, which Exec might lack. Now let's take a look at those new Kuva weapons we're getting. There were only three, but are they the good three? There are no stat leaks of these weapons, so this is going to be entirely speculation. That also means this section of the video will be shorter. Kuva Heck, this could be good. If it can slot scatter justice, it will be by far the best in the Heck family. If it can't, it will depend on the slash weight or whether if DE finally gave us another crit shotgun so we can run Hunter Munitions effectively. We do have Arcane Avenger and Combat Discipline, but I don't want to always have to resort to that, especially for a brand new Lich weapon. All fire can dump everything at once, and the Heck family already has smaller magazine relative to fire rate, so primed tactical pump will be much appreciated on this weapon. More time shooting, less time reloading. Extra element imbue will also make it that much better. Shotgun plus gun dish and overload? This is a match made in heaven. This is a new Kuva weapon I have the highest hopes for. Our next weapon is Kuvazar. It appears to be straight up power creep, nothing special. They improved the flak shot range beyond 10 meters, which is honestly a big sticking point on why I didn't like the original Zar to start with, so maybe my opinion will change here. The barrage is getting its damage buffed, but by how much? It should be by a significant amount in my opinion because the bomblets don't have that much AoE, which makes status application and damage a mixed result. The weapon has historically also been crit poor, so I'm hoping that gets brought up to par as well, else we have just a weaker Euphona Prime Buckshot. And I'm talking a big bump, like up to 30 or 40%, not just 20 to 25 from 17. The weapon only had 3 in the mag, and a disproportionately long reload also, so hopefully both of those get buffed too. Actual status on the flak mode would also be nice, as even Euphona had both higher damage, higher slash weight, and higher status, which was still only 9%. Or maybe change how it works, like a homing barrage, otherwise I don't see Kuvazar being that good in the future beyond a gimmick gun, even if it's fun. The final new weapon is Kuva Gradler. Damage is being bumped up and you're getting instant peak fire rate, no more spooling. 
This will make it a good pick for sure, but we need more content to actually use arch guns for this to matter. Currently, we only really have Profit Taker Playground that really tests our arch guns, and that isn't enough. Also, that category is already dominated by Imperator Vandal and Mosalon, and the previous arch gun variant has very poor ammo economy, making them undesirable for the fight due to longer deployment cooldowns. Kuva Grattler is a welcome addition, but will probably be forgotten like Kuva Yanga despite being good until more arch gun based content arrives. Cough Cough Deimos Grand Boss anyone? And that should be all of them. 10 weapons in the previous video and 7 in this one. I didn't cover Yarelli's new Compressa pistol because we honestly don't know anything about it, so you have to wait tomorrow for that one where I'll make sure to get a Yarelli build video out alongside her pistol. I'm very excited for the Tenet Heavy Blade and Scythe coming, as well as the Kuva Heck. Which ones are you waiting on the most? I want to get the Tsar also, and I really hope it isn't a letdown. I've tried to gather all this information myself to reach an educated evaluation on each weapon. Please remember I do not represent nor know about the final stats of each and every weapon shown. These are only my speculations based on what I know. So take this information with a grain of salt. I hope my thoughts helped you paint a better picture on the new weapons and which ones you might want to go for first. This video is part 2 of reviewing and breaking down the new weapons coming with the Sisters of Parvos update. Part 1 included all the new Parvo Sister weapons and the two unreleased Tenet Ferox and the Tenet Unnamed Auto Sniper. If you want to see those, click the card at the top right. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible. Like I've done with covering the Tempest Starry and the Sisters of Parvos updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm also preparing to get you the info first once the Sisters of Parvos mainline drops tomorrow. You don't want to miss out on that day one Urelli content, do you? That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.